Hey folks, as the headline said, today we're looking at an adapter that will let you use your manual focus lenses in an autofocus manner on your Nikon Z cameras. Now this is nothing new per se, there's been loads of adapters that do this. This is the latest generation. I wanna say from the outset, as I got ready to film this, I found there's just been a flood of these videos go online. I'm not part of some influencer campaign. I'm not being paid to make this. I asked them about their adapters actually because I was interested in the one they're meant to be making for Hasselblad to Leica. And they sent me this one out to check out. Now this is the second generation tech art are doing. They're completely transparent about the fact that what they're doing is reverse engineering Nikon's autofocus. They kind of got started with their Sony adapters then started making Nikon. What's new in the version two, you might've seen that the old ones always had a bulge out the bottom. They basically had a big bulge and it was one big motor that was down there. The new one is not much bigger than the mount itself. It has four motors positioned around the radius, which should give a much smoother action. They say that now gives it higher support for uh, support for heavier lenses up to 500 grams, which covers three of the four that I wanted to test. And it, the new one is supporting video autofocus, whereas the old one wasn't. It also is supported by every single, well, it will work on every single one of the current Nikon Z cameras. So in this video, we're gonna check it out, see if the focus is faster, is more accurate, is less jittery, and how it does in video as well. We'll do it on the Z9, as well as the Z7 Mark II. We've got a bunch of tests planned, let's hit it. So for this first shoot, I brought along two M mount lenses. One is like his own 35 mil Summerlux. This is the previous generation. It's still optically spectacular. And then I brought along my MS Optics 50 mil F 1.0. Not optically spectacular, but optically interesting. Both of these are way under the weight rating of this new adapter. I also have a TT Artisan 50 mil F 0.95 which is about 100 grams over the weight rating, but we'll still give that a shot uh, back in studio because whilst you should stick within the weight ratings and if it doesn't perform well, then that's fair enough. But because the way this adapter works, you're not really limited to M mount. You could get a second lens adapter, put it on here and then put Canon or Nikon or whatever lenses you want on here and then get the same autofocus wizardry working onto your Nikon Z body. So a lot of those lenses are going to be over 500 grams. So let's see how it does with those two. Now, Rosanna is a fantastic dancer. We've had her in three or four times to shoot with, to do all kinds of different action. Today, seeing these adapters aren't super fast, we're going to start out doing just some static portraits using backlighting and direct lighting with a couple of lenses and work our way up to some movement and dance. If you're in the Nikon Z system, check out my complete setup guide. It takes you through every different camera in the Z range, shows you how to set them up and get the most out of them for your style of shooting. Links for that are in the description below. Now, something I wanna point out about these adapters is how they're working is basically like a macro extension tube. If you're not familiar with this, if you get a lens focused at a certain point and you move it slightly further away from the lens mount, that brings the point of focus closer. So what this is doing is you need to basically focus the lens that you're adapting to infinity, and then this will push the lens further away when it's focusing close, and then pull it back to the body when you're focusing closer to infinity. 
that's as simple as it is, then it's working with the camera's phase detect autofocus to see where am I getting the most contrast, where it needs to be, do I need to push further away or closer, you know, basically acting as an interpreter that the camera would do speaking to the lens, but here you're just pushing it in and out rather than actually moving the lens elements around. And that's important, especially with something like Leica lenses. Why people talk about this magic of Leica lenses is their floating element design. So as I'm pulling my focus from closest focus through to infinity, it's not just that all of the elements are moving further or closer to the focal plane. It's not that simple. They're moving at different amounts. So here by focusing at something five feet away, I actually need to be focused at infinity and then just kind of extension tubing it to focus closer. So you're not getting the best out of the optics because it's not actually moving the relative distance of the different elements. I hope that makes sense. Basically, you're not going to get as beautiful performance from your lenses as you would if you were actually manually focusing it yourself. I have to say I'm really loving the results of the 35mm Summerlux on the Nikon Z9. Out of camera it looks like it's been processed and actually the soft vignetting, I know I'm making excuses for it but I feel like it just looks like a processed image that I'm really enjoying. We plan to use this for some of our video productions in future but I can see myself using it more for stills as well. Now this is a difficult challenge for the adapter and the camera. One, she's doing that voguing style where her hands keep going in front of her face, blocking the eye for detection. But also when she's moving closer and further from the camera, it is a bit of a challenge for any setup. We'll do some more in studio in more controlled testing without all of the hand movements and see how it does a bit later in the video. There's a timeline below. So we are rolling with the adapter now on the Z9 and the 51.0. How's it doing? Um, overall, I think it's doing okay if you're not doing moving subjects, but it's not perfect. So let's head in studio. We'll get in another model, do more controlled light tests and see what kind of results we're getting with the Z7 II, throw in the F0.95 into the mix and we'll wrap things up in studio as well. First up, let's test out that f0.95 lens from TT Artisans. So this has happened a couple of times. I just had her step out and now the autofocus isn't responding. Even when I'm touching a new spot, the adapter has just stopped responding. Now there's two ways to look at this. Is it the adapter's fault or the camera's? Even if you're using a fast native lens and you're way out of focus, it sometimes won't find the face and just can't pick up the face to start doing the autofocus. But given this has such a tendency to hunt anyway, the fact that the adapter when it just can't find anything doesn't do a quick push-pull all the way to see what it can find is surprising. So I think the only way to overcome it is to turn it off, turn it back on, and no, it's still not doing it. I don't know what to tell you, but as of right now, 
the adapter has just stopped responding at all. Yep, how's that for timing? We are live in the video right now. This is not staged, this is not planned, this is not what I want to happen. Okay, now it just came back. When I went to infinity, then it worked and it came back to life. But it's still not really. Can you step back in for me? Okay, I'll be honest, in that situation I was a millisecond away from saying I'm taking this adapter off, I don't want it to risk damaging my camera. But putting it to infinity, on this lens at least, that seems to do it. Now if I tap the background, oh, it just lost her again. So here I'm at infinity, just turn your head slightly back and forward for me, Felicia. Yep, yep so it's staying with it, yep. Then if I'm tapping the background, saying go to the background, see, it just gets lost and it won't focus anymore. If I go back to her, then it's got her. Background, it just gets lost there. Going closer, because I know it's not an infinity, isn't helping, isn't helping, and here it'll get her. But if I'm not at infinity, oh, now, now what I was about to say isn't happening anymore, because it was only getting her when I would go to infinity. Now I've focused uh, two meters away and five meters away, 10 meters away and infinity, and it's all working again. But still, it gets lost when I try to, oh no, now it's got the background. So it's just inconsistent. Every time I try to find a logic to it, it undoes it. It's inconsistent as hell. Let's see how it does in video. So here is a reference file. We grabbed some footage on the gimbal with the Z9 and the 50mm 1.2 wide open. Now, of course, this is going to perform better, but you can see basically it's with the eye 100% all the time. It's not on the eyelids, it's not on the nose, it's not on the cheek. It's tracking her eyes and it's just perfect. Next up, we threw the TT Artisan 50 0 0.95, which is a little heavier than, you know, they recommend to see how it would do. And you can, well, you can see it's in and out and it's not doing terribly well. Next up, we put it on a tripod and had her move closer and further. And you can see it's still not tracking with her too well. We did several different variations on the Z7 II as well, but the Z9 is the best performer. Here, as she had the slowest possible walk of baby steps forward and back again, you can see it's, you know, to be fair, it's struggling still. That's not even on straight. What? Okay, you see that? It just let the lens go beyond the locking point. The lens should go on here and lock there, but it will actually let it go way past the locking point. And that's a lens that costs as much as this camera. I really would like it to be well enough machined that it knows when the lens should be stopping. Okay, so talking about inconsistency, I feel like the Leica is doing better, staying with her better. Also, the exposure is varying less, but I don't know what to put that down to. I, as far as the camera's concerned, I mean, they're both manual lenses. It's not like one is having a better communication because there is no communication from the lens to the adapter other than contrast. You know, I think my main takeaway for this is ignore their marketing. It still sucks for video, but for stills, it's kind of usable. Here in good light, on a not super contrasty lens, it's doing fine. Go to wide open, f1.0, lean towards me. Come a little closer to me, just leaning, yeah. Super soapy background, works fine. Let's try all three lenses. Uh, and fair to say, it's definitely better out here, stills rather than video, more light rather than less, but the TT Artisan is still more jittery, less accurate than the smaller lighter lens. 
So if my theory about size, weight and contrast has any validity, the Leica lens should still do the best out here. Let's try that next. And yes, I would say it's the best, most stable. And when it does need to do a quick search back and forward, it does it really quickly. However, there is a little more jitteriness in the exposure out here than I was experiencing inside. Let me come a little closer to you. So I have to say the Leica on here, absolutely usable with the Z7 II. So I'm gonna lean in, you stay still. Now you lean in. Now you stay there. Now you lean out. Now I'll lean right in and Ernest, so now I won't move, so you can focus right in on this guy. Now you lean into me. And lean out. Now this is ideal lighting, bright, but not too contrasty. Ideal lens, lots of light gathering, nice and sharp, super lightweight, and it's still pulsing. I think this is just not a video solution. So it was a fun couple of days testing out this new adapter. I have to say, having done multiple tests at different times, some of my findings along the way, whilst they're all true and accurate to how we were finding it on that shoot, I have more detailed feelings now. So thank you for joining us and staying with us till the conclusion. My initial impression was that in a way I was kind of disappointed with it and that I think this is a really niche product and that it doesn't really live up to everything that it could be. And I still do kind of find that, but I think at the end of the day, it's actually not a remarkable finding at all. If you are looking to use manual focus lenses and if you weren't using an adapter like this, you'd be manually focusing them, then this is, and that's the case, right? Then this is a great option. If you're hoping for any kind of native performance, forget about it. Ignore the $400 price tag on this thing. You're just not going to be satisfied with the performance. But if there's something about the look of some particular manual focus lenses that you love and you want to get some autofocus capabilities, then this is a really interesting adapter and to be fair, probably the best of its kind that I have ever tested. Taking a look at the images, what I said when we're shooting with Felicia really bared out to be true. I think having a lens that has good sharpness and contrast really helps the system be able to identify and lock on. Having lenses that are lighter rather than heavier definitely improves the performance. But having said that, I noticed that uh, the makers of this, TechArt, on their own promotion videos, even with the old adapters that are weight rated lower than this one, we're still testing lenses of this kind of weight and demonstrating that it works. So whilst it's beyond their specification, they're kind of putting out the idea that they should work. For me, these two are within the realm of usable and this one really wasn't. But the big takeaway on all of this was that even when I was talking about, oh, this one's getting more in focus, this one's got a dreamy background, this one's whatever, getting them in and looking at them on screen, so few of them are perfectly in focus. And that's partly because lenses like this one, you have to be like a tenth of a millimeter perfectly in focus to really get an amazingly sharp shot with it wide open. Something like the Leica Summerlux, on the other hand, you'll know when it's sharp, but it's still really few. On the wide shot, they're looking pretty good, but then when you zoom in, you realize it's just not. Something else I found, and there's a couple of things here that aren't necessarily uh, an issue of the adapter, and some that are. Um, I noticed throughout this that the exposure jumped around a lot, even in easy light, the exposure was just fluctuating quite a bit, no matter the lens. And that's not the adapter's fault. That's how your camera is being able to meter with these manual focus lenses. But given this is what you're doing, putting this kind of a lens onto your Nikon Z body, knowing the overall performance, the combination of the lens, the adapter and the camera, I think is a fair comment. 
in terms of video, I, we shared already with you my thoughts, but Ernest having filmed me in different sections and Rosanna doing her voguing dancing, basically the takeaway was that if you're using a nice contrasty lens, you're not fluctuating the distance rapidly and you're not covering the face rapidly, it does pretty well maybe like 70% of a native lens, but as soon as you're moving further away and closer, or hands are going in front of the eyes, you're much more likely to lose them. And I think essentially the takeaway is it's not gonna be good for really long takes where you're going to potentially ruin 30 seconds worth of great footage because it then has a massive hunt at the end. And I think you really need to love the look of the result to make it worth the frustration. And having said that, we found, and I'm really actually genuinely surprised by this, that the 35 Summer Lux wide open on the Z9 looks freaking beautiful. The colors straight out of camera in ProRes are gorgeous. And it is something where for shorter takes, I can see us mixing this into the kit. Keep your eye out for my upcoming Fuji X-T5 video. A lot of that was filmed on that combo and I think it looks just fantastic. So, if you can accept the fact that you might get the face in focus, but not the eye that you might have in video, jittery, you know, fluctuating that you wouldn't get with a native lens, and that's a willing sacrifice for you to get the look of these old lenses, then it's definitely worthwhile. I would say for serious productions where you need to do long takes, it's going to be difficult to use these for video. But circling back to the beginning of this conclusion, if you really want to use these manual focus lenses and otherwise you'd be manually focusing them, the strike rate is reasonable in that case and you've got the manual focus. You just have to keep in mind there will be moments of frustration and you won't get the optical best out of the lens for the reason I said you're losing the floating lens design of these lenses and just using them as if they're on a macro extension tube. Having said that, and despite all of the negatives, and despite I really don't think it's up to the video task still on the Nikon bodies, which is again a combination of the both, I'm not putting all the blame on the adapter, but they are trying to reverse engineer Nikon's algorithm. Having said all of that, I do think that we will use it from time to time. I just want to get it out there that this isn't some, oh my god, everything just works perfectly, get one of these and you'll shoot with no problems. You will have problems, but if the look is important enough to you, maybe it's worth struggling through them. Do check out the two different guides. They're linked below. Let me know any questions that you have or maybe other lenses that you'd like to see tested out on this combo, and we'll see you soon.